Hello, everyone. Good afternoon, and thanks for coming in on such short notice. Apologies for that. You know, I've been talking about trying to schedule these a little bit further in advance, but it just never seems to quite work that way, you guys. I do have some things that I want to talk about, and then what happens is I get so excited about it, I just basically want to pop on here and do it live. But the beauty of it is uh, we're back on the main channel. And now we're back to business as usual in terms of getting the truth out to all of you guys. Nothing's holding us back at this point. I will tell you that there has been some very, very overt censorship going on, and it's getting crazy. Um, Kay Small is in the chat, a friend of mine, and uh, she's been experiencing this censorship as her channel has started to grow over there and um basically i had experienced it personally myself this morning when i went to go see it check on her to see if she had uploaded any videos and i found that i was had been unsubscribed from her channel and this is this is just typical you guys this is what they do they they literally go around and unsubscribe you without your knowledge from channels that you subscribe to and i don't know how they do it or what the mechanism is but i can prove to you and show you that this is in fact happening so what can you do to combat this because it's one thing to complain about it but basically what you want to do is pick your five favorite channels and just go to the channel on YouTube and have that channel pulled up in a tab in its own personal tab so that you can see all the videos that upload and just refresh that channel and then you will be sure to get all the videos uploaded on that channel because if you just rely on your subscription feed, chances are you may have been unsubscribed from many, many channels that, uh, that you like their work. Now, another thing that's going on is, as you guys will see here in this page that you're looking at right now that I'm sharing with you, this is what they call like the letterbox. Okay? So it's, in other words, it's not full screen. It's a smaller framed in version of what you're seeing on your screen. Okay. Now, in the past, you used to be able to play a movie within this frame, okay? A lot of people, you'll notice on some of their channels, if they're playing content that is not theirs, they will simply put it inside of what looks like a television set, like if you're in someone's living room, right? There's a reason for that. It's not for effect. It's to bypass the censorship police, okay? Because their algorithms were not advanced enough to, to see that in the television set right, or in within a frame. Well, now they've kicked up their game, you guys. They've kept, kicked up their game because I just got notified on a movie trailer that I played. I think it was actually the Tarzan movie trailer. And I played all those in frame. And in fact, they did identify it as copyrighted material and they claimed the video. So what does that mean? It basically means that at this point, you guys, if you're using any material from within the last 10 or 15 years, any media from the last 10 or 15 years, it's going to get claimed and you're basically going to have to give over that video that you created over to the advertising revenue of the people who created the content. And that's simply how it works. Now, what I've done is I've, I'm just going to do screenshots and what's going to suck for you guys is you're not going to get to see some of the cinematography and some of the effect it's going to basically nullify and dumb down the effect of the information that i'm trying to present to you which is exposing all of the sorcery that comes in through your senses on a daily basis through the media and so basically i'm going to be less effective because of these rules and many of you saw that in my video that i uploaded this morning the um, dark city Many of you had asked me to take a look at the film Dark City. So I did a full and complete and very thorough decode of that entire film. It's about 20 minutes long, and um, but it's all screenshots, no cinematography. And eventually, you guys, where all this is headed is they're actually going to do a frame by frame. If you even use a frame, one single frame, a screenshot from a movie or a video or whatever they want to copyright, it will be picked up and that's going to be the end of that. And that's when I have to reinvent myself and try to find something, a new way to 
present the truth to you guys, okay? We might alter the screen or something or alter the image some kind of way so that they can't even detect what's being looked at. But anyway, you guys, I just wanted to kind of talk a little bit while you guys all gathered around. Um, looks like you guys are in here. I'm looking to see how many have shown up so far. And then we're going to put to rest all of the doubts about the authenticity of the book of Enoch. Put together a very detailed presentation for you guys today. Um, it's going to be short, but it's going to be very detailed. Um, we're going to go and look at all of the times that Jesus quoted the book of Enoch. We are also going to look at how old the book of Enoch is, the oldest version, because what they want you to believe is that Enoch is only a few hundred years old. That's what they want you to believe. And it's simply not true, you guys. Enoch is much older than a couple hundred years old, okay? And I'm going to prove it to you. I'm going to prove it to you. Um, Uh-oh, sounds like I cut out. Let's make sure we've got everything rolling here. Bizarre. I'm going to give some shout-outs, and we'll go ahead and get started, you guys. Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll start from up here. Doug Moffitt. Hocus Pocus, Lemon Yellow, Wayne, Jules is in the house. Maker Country Great Again. Hey, I'm all about that. Grocer Piante, Butterfly, Rumors of War, Jasmine De Vegas, Holly, Eric, Buddha Girl, Susan Red. <laughs> She's at work, but I'm here. Cool. This is not going to go on too long. Hopefully, you don't get busted. I think I said Holly already, Mathis PT, K Small, of course, Liam X Mail, The Mailman, Hocus Pocus, Seeking the Truth. I love each and every one of you guys. Molotov Cocktail, JPV, and uh, got a good group in here, Victoria Sarton, Wayne, ML McGrady, Elizabeth Russell, David Warner, Mark Anderson, and Dez joined us. And I hope I didn't leave anyone out. We're going to go ahead and get started. What are the Dead Sea Scrolls? Now, there's a lot of disinformation out there about the Book of Enoch. But let me boil it all down for you. There was a huge find that occurred in 1947 called the Dead Sea Scrolls. Now, why were the Dead Sea Scrolls so important? Because they were carbon dated. Now, we know that carbon dating is not necessarily accurate, but you can rest assured that some of these scrolls were probably even older than what they're telling us. Okay? We have Dead Sea Scrolls carbon dated at 400 BC. This is 400 years, three to 400 years before Christ walked the earth. This is unbelievable, you guys, because the, these findings in the Dead Sea Scrolls were so old that they predated many of the current manuscripts that we had. So what did the Dead Sea Scroll discovery accomplish? Well, what it did was it confirmed the translations that we had of the Bible, because up to this point, some of the translations um, were in question, okay? Because they were trying, they were basically, they had much more recent versions of the Bible. And they were like, okay, how do we know that this is authentic? Because we don't have any documents going back um, more than, you know, less than a thousand years, maybe. So what the Dead Sea Scrolls did is it went back over 2,000 years. And it was the the translations were almost identical. So it confirmed that the scribes from that point to this point had done a pretty good job in terms of translating the Bible. But here's what they don't focus on and they don't tell you is that there were many other books found with the Dead Sea Scrolls. Okay, let me repeat that. There were many other books found with the Dead Sea Scrolls. 
with the Hebrew Bible, books that were left out of the canon. What is the canon? The canon were the books that the, basically the Catholic Church and the Council of Nicaea decided were going to be included in the inspired Word of God, the modern Bible, which makes up 66 books. So, what was what was this discovery made of? Okay, forty percent were copies from the Hebrew Scriptures. So these were your your Old Testament books, right? Another thirty percent were from the Second Temple period, which were not canonized. See, they admitted here in the Hebrew Bible, the Book of Enoch, Jubilees, Book of Tobit, Wisdom of Sirach, and Psalms. Now, Psalms is actually, oh, there were additional Psalms. I'm going to have to take a look at that. We only were given Psalms up to a certain point, but this is saying that there was additional Psalms that were not included in the Bible. That, um, wow, this is interesting. And then there was another 30% that were sectarian manuscripts of previously unknown documents that shed light on the rules and beliefs of a particular group or groups within the greater Judaism, like the community rule, the war scroll, now, I don't know about these documents, but what we're focused on today are the Hebrew Scriptures and the extra-canonical text. In other words, texts that were not included in the canon. Now, why would they not update the Bible with these new documents? It's because by doing that, they have to admit that they were wrong. Now, remember, they've carbon dated this Bible or these, these Dead Sea Scroll discoveries, back to 200 B.C., before Christ walked the earth. And I'm getting to, this is all um, in preparation for what I'm going to tell you next, but I have to lay the groundwork and set the foundation. Cave 7 yielded fewer than 20 fragments of Greek documents, including Letter of Jeremiah, which became a subject of much speculation in later decades, and a Greek copy of a scroll of Enoch. So it was in Cave 7. The Dead Sea Scrolls were found in these caves called the Qumran Caves, Q-U-M-R-A-N. Here it says, according to the chief editor of DSS editorial team, there are at least four privately owned scrolls from Cave 11 that have not yet been made available for scholars. Are you kidding me? Among them is the complete Aramaic manuscript of the book of Enoch. They're being held by private owners and not have not been made available to scholars. And why do you think that is? And these people, you know, they don't have any problem telling us the truth. The truth is out there, but few seek to find it. So I get attacked on my channel because I reference and quote the Book of Enoch very often, and I consider it a part of the inspired text. But people do not do their research. It's easy for them to just say, oh, we just trust the version of the Bible that we've been given. And I always give this example about if God was a parent and we were the children and there was a cookie jar in the kitchen, and God already knew that we would or would not steal cookies from the cookie jar. Would he give a warning beforehand? Do not put your hands in the cookie jar. If he already knew that nobody was going to go into the cookie jar, he would never give a warning because he's God and he knows what was going to happen in the future. So the same applies to the warnings that God gives about the to the scribes and Pharisees about changing the word. Why warn if it's not going to happen? So the assumption is, the inference is, that it will happen, and that it has happened, and that it is happening right now. Now, I want to give a, a shout-out to Zen Garcia. I was on his show uh, last week. It's a very good show. Um, Zen and I are almost on the exact same page with most 99% of our beliefs. And I'm still in a learning phase as well to find out what the ultimate truths are. So I don't claim to be 100% right about everything that I believe. I always tell you guys, go to the Holy Spirit. And if the message resonates after research and 
consultation with the Holy Spirit and Jesus, if it resonates, then it's truth to you. And if not, we're all on a journey, right? So Zen sent me this email uh, because I'd asked him for any other evidence that he has about the authenticity of Enoch. And he sent me this email. And he says, Joshua himself alludes directly to the verse 1 Enoch in the following passage. When he recanted that angels do not marry and in heaven are not given in marriage. Here's the scripture. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given into marriage, but are the angels of God in heaven. That's Matthew 23, 20. So then this is the Enoch that he was referencing. Now how do we know that Jesus was referencing Enoch? Because I just showed you that Enoch was older than it came before Jesus' time. Okay? So if it came before Jesus' time, then Jesus must have been quoting it when the things that he said matched exactly what was in the book of Enoch. Here's the first example, and I'm going to show you 12 more from a site that I found of the instances in which Jesus quoted Enoch. This one in reference to angels being given into marriage. And in Enoch, it says, Then addressing me, he spoke and said, Hear, neither be afraid, O righteous Enoch, you scribe of righteousness. Approach hither and hear my voice. Go say to the watchers of heaven. He's talking to God, saying, telling Enoch to go talk to the watchers of heaven, the fallen angels that would go into the daughters of men, who have sent you to pray for, for them. You ought to pray for men and not men for you. So the fallen angels were asking Enoch to pray for them because they knew what their judgment would be. Because they had sinned. They had left their first estate in heaven and they chose earth. It says, Wherefore have you forsaken the lofty and holy heaven which endures forever and have lain with women, have defiled yourself with the daughters of men, have taken yourself wives, have acted like the sons of the earth, and have begotten and impious offspring, giants, you being spiritual, holy, and possessing a life which is eternal, have polluted yourselves with women, have begotten in carnal blood, have lusted in the blood of men, and have done as those who are flesh and blood do. These, however, die and perish. Therefore have I given to them wives that they might cohabitate with them, that sons might be born of them. So in other words, we are given the ability to cohabitate and have children because we die. And if we did not cohabitate and have children, the human race would end, right? This is where we get into the transsexual, transhuman agenda and the homosexual agenda and why this is so important to, to the enemy because he's in defiance of God still to this day. So he's going to push this, right? It's all about the angels versus the man, right? And the angels gave up their eternal life to come down here and have a finite life. So let's continue all this scripture. And that this might be transacted upon earth. But you, from the beginning, were made spiritual, possessing a life which is eternal and not subject to death forever. Therefore, I have not made wives for you, because being spiritual, your dwelling is in heaven. Now the giants who have been born of spirit and flesh shall be called upon earth evil spirits. And on earth shall be their habitation. Evil spirits shall proceed from their flesh because they were created from above. So there's, a, there's an angelic aspect, a spiritual aspect, which is different than our physical aspect of our bodies. Okay, From the Holy Watchers was their beginning and primary foundation. Evil spirits shall be shall they be upon the earth. So when they die, their spirit is locked here. The spirit does not get to go to heaven. The spiritual part of the these Nephilim beings, these giants, okay? That's why we have evil spirits here, going in and out of people. It says, in the spirits of the wicked shall, shall they be called. The habitation of the spirits of heaven shall be in heaven, but upon earth shall be the habitation of terrestrial spirits. Who are born on earth. The spirits of the giants shall be like clouds, Nephilim, which shall oppress, corrupt, fall, content, and bruise upon earth. They shall cause lamentation. This is the source of all evil, you guys, right here. 
No food shall they eat, and they shall be thirsty. They shall be concealed and shall rise up against the sons of men and against women, for they come forth during the days of slaughter and destruction. So this was the example that Zen sent me of how Jesus was talking about the fallen angels and the Nephilim and how they did not have the right to marry because they were in heaven and eternal life. And Jesus was quoting Enoch. Now, I found many more examples in this page. We're going to go over those in a minute. But first, I'm going to pop back here in the chat, make sure we didn't get disconnected. Give some more shout-outs. Heather's in the house. Shadow, Cali 524. Sharon 9. Um, and I'm going to read here in the chat and make sure if there's anything, any questions that you guys have. Enoch's a good book, says Holly. Holly, There is a three-hour version on YouTube if you prefer to listen. Absolutely. Um, let's see. Bum, 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 bum. All right. Cool. So let's continue on. And I've got 12 more examples of how Enoch is inspired. Now, I'm going to put this link in the description because I have a feeling you guys are going to need this because I'm sure you guys get attacked well, as much as I do about Enoch. And there, will, there are Christians out there, 90%, I would say, that will just dismiss you out of hand when you mention the book of Enoch. They're just going to say, that's not even in the Bible. They won't research it. They won't look at what's going on. And uh, there's truth, love, and honor. Glad to have you in here, you guys. Finally, I'm awake. Um, Leading Edge 67 just showed up. All right, so that's why we're doing this, you guys. We're going to put some teeth in this, okay? This is the real deal. So first, you show them that Enoch was found with the Dead Sea Scrolls. Then you show them how old the Dead Sea Scrolls are, the carbon dating, which is B.C., and this goes on. Let's see if there. Let's search this for uh, Enoch. Unbelievable how they took the the private Nikasi, the private Aramaic version. Now Aramaic is the oldest form of language of the Bible. It goes Aramaic, Hebrew, and then Greek. And so they have the oldest version of Enoch, which I would like to see, and I think it is our right to see because it does not belong. To any private owner. So this is it, you guys. This is unbelievable. Now, it's not to say that some of these verses are not in other parts of the Bible, but the proof here is that they are in Enoch and Jesus spoke these words. Here it is: Blessed are the meek that they for they shall inherit the earth. Jesus said this. Enoch also said it when he said, The elect shall possess light, joy, and peace, and they shall inherit the earth. Next passage, The Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son. So in other words, Jesus will, will judge all. Enoch said the same thing. The principal part of the judgment was assigned to him, the Son of Man. In Matthew, Jesus said, They shall inherit everlasting life. Enoch, those who will inherit eternal life. Jesus says, Woe unto you that are rich, for ye have received your consolation. And Enoch said the same thing. Woe to you who are rich, for in your riches have you trusted, for from your riches you, you shall be removed. You guys seeing a pattern here? Jesus says, Ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. Enoch said, I will place each of them on a throne of glory. Jesus said, Woe unto that man through whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It had been good for that man if he had not been born. And Enoch said, Where will the habitation of sinners be who have rejected the Lord of spirits? It would have been better for them had they never been born. Jesus said, Between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed. And Enoch said, by a chasm are their souls separated. In my father's house are many mansions, said Jesus. 
And Enoch said, In that day shall the elect one sit upon a throne of glory and shall choose their conditions and countless habitations. Jesus said that ye may be called the children of light. And Enoch said the good from the generation of light. And here's the last quote. The water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. And Enoch said all the thirsty drank and were filled with wisdom, having their habitation with righteous, the elect, and the holy. There's another quote in Jude. This is a direct quote. And he says, And Enoch also the seventh from Adam prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousand of his saints to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of all their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against them. All right, so this site has some good information on it, and that's what I wanted to mainly cover today, you guys. Uh, I am going to be, what am I going to be working on next? I think I want to watch this series called Humans. Got a hot tip. And I'm going to pull this apart. Science fiction, brand new series that uh, came out. And uh, we're going to see if we can find copies of this online. And try to decode humans. It's about artificial intelligence, robots becoming humans, which is what we're seeing a lot of recently. All right, you guys, let's pop in the chat here. And hopefully that was helpful. Let's see. Gary's in the house. If you guys have any questions for me, go ahead and pop them in here. And we can talk about it. Ruby Star Diamond just showed up. Yeah, I'll have this published in about 15 minutes. Jay says, I pretty much wa quit watching TV, following celebs, watching sports, even shopping at corporate stores. Absolutely. That's what we need to do is get out of the beast. The problem is it's going to come to a certain point, you guys, where they're going to place so much legislation and rules on people that are outside the system that we are going to then be oppressed because of our lifestyle of being outside the system. In other words, I see taxes going up. I see them basically punishing people who live off grid or who don't shop. There may even be a point where they might force us to buy things to say that if you do not buy from us, um, you could be penalized maybe on your taxes. Like people that buy more things with their disposable income, we'll get a tax break or something weird like that. They're going to say it's to help the health of the economy. Okay. I can see that coming. I also can see coming more tighter reg regulations and restrictions on water use. Okay. So you're not going to have the ability to grow your garden because it's going to be like so expensive to put water on the garden, or you're simply not going to have access to it. You're not going to be able to collect it. That's going to be illegal. But just simply living the lifestyle of being self-sufficient is an enriching lifestyle, you guys. It's enriching. It's it's wholesome. It helps you connect, reconnect with your cre creator, your creator, and reattach to the symbiotic relationship that we have with our creator, in which we become blessed by the process of trusting in the cycles. Of life and the cycles of give and take okay that's what this is all about it's a spiritual connection and when we're severed from that spiritual connection to our earth and our surroundings and the cycles then we are disconnected from our own spirit and the spirit with God that's what's going on here and this is what the enemy is trying to do make no mistake there are no shortages. 
Yeah, there's droughts because they've put the city in a drought location. That's why there's a drought there. There's plenty of water around this planet. But they create these synthetic shortages in order to then lock you into either fear or shortage or these different things so that you are now under control. Okay. So what needs to happen is people need to move to areas where there's plenty of water. Then you're not going to worry about this. But then they have another, a different mechanism of control. That's how this new world order works. So when you go to places of abundance, it's either in a tornado zone or it's, the, it's too expensive to live there. The cost of living is too high. Or you know the elite have taken it over. That is what's going on here. Okay. Make no mistake. And so what needs to happen is we need to we need to make efforts, but there is going to come a day where those who are living off the grid, they're going to be more and more oppressed because the legislation is just going to continue to oppress those who are not part of the grid. I've even heard certain city ordinances where they are saying that it is a health hazard for you not to be linked into the utility system. And they're not allowing you to set up your tiny house in such and such city limits or wherever because it is now considered a quote-unquote health hazard. I've also heard excuses of New World Order bureaucrats saying that you cannot live on a mobile home in your property or a travel trailer because it becomes a projectile in a tornado is what they're saying. And that it has to be pinned down to the ground. Basically, it has to be a New World Order dwelling that fits under their codes, right? And they, they just come up with these ludicrous excuses to force you into their money system, right? Because you need money to build a house, right? You can build a dwelling for free, but that's they're not that's not going to be acceptable. It has to be according to their standards. Okay. So this is what's going on. And this is the truth. Uh, and I'm not just making this up. This has my, been my personal experience and my search to live off the grid. And every time I go down, down a road of, of thinking that I have a, found a solution to living somewhere outside of their system and their grid, uh, a door closes. Um, I'll give you an example. About three, two years ago, maybe it was three years ago when I was working, um, I was like, man, I'm going to save up. I'm going to try to save up $50,000. And I'm gonna buy a I'm gonna buy a property. I wanna buy some land, at least 10 acres, and I wanna stick a travel trailer on it, and I wanna get some solar panels, and I'm going to, you know, basically make an off-grid structure. Okay. Um okay, small is asking if I can go live on the channel after this. Actually, I won't be able to do that, Kim, because I've got some stuff to do. I'm gonna work on some different decos, but um, everybody head over to K-Small after this. Um, we're only going to be on here another 10 minutes after I tell this story, and then uh, I'm sure that her show will be awesome. All right. Um, finally Awake asked about two Enochs. Yeah, there is two Enochs. There's an Enoch, the son of Cain. That was Cain's son. Actually, it was the first city. Um, Cain named the first city Enoch. First city ever mentioned in the Bible was built by Cain, and he named the city Enoch. I think there's an Enoch in Cain's bloodline as well. So that's interesting to that's an interesting thing to research. So back to the story. So I thought about I'm like, man, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna buy a house. I'm gonna buy a house. Real sweet just joined us. Um what else? Linda's in the house. So I decided to, you know, buy this property and I didn't need anything fancy, even if it was, you know, just a trailer on it or something. I was going to convert that trailer into a self-sufficient place. I wanted to start a garden and even maybe invite some people of like mind or maybe open up my garden for those who just want to eat my food, you know? Do what Jesus would do, right? So I start looking into this. 
And at the time I was living here on Central Coast and I had a day job and then I had my YouTube channel. Um, so in like a couple years, I was going to be able to save up for this, for this property. But then I thought, why don't I just get like a mortgage and then I needed a tax write off anyway, and I can just buy the property and the tax write off I would get would basically equal what the mortgage would be, which was going to be about $400 a month for this mortgage. But no, that's not allowed. Because if you're, if you're not going to live in the property, then your interest rate's different. Your interest rate triples, and now your mortgage payment's $1,000 a month for that same property just because you're not living in it. So do you see how this works? Okay, they come up with all these rules, and it's basically like a safety net because if everybody did that, they would – you would have a bunch of people buying land, normal people like you and me, you know, um, middle class, lower middle class, now would be able to afford to pay a mortgage on a property somewhere in the Midwest or in Kentucky or wherever and be able to have a place to go to with some land so that you could have something that is your own, okay? But they, the banks won't allow that. That is the problem. The banks are not allowing that. So therefore, you know, that was the difference. I, I couldn't believe the difference in the in the mortgage payment. It was four hundred, or it was a thousand. And then the the lady was like, "Well, you can live there." And I was like, "Well, if I'm living there, I'm not going to be able to do the job that I have here in California." And She's like, okay, well, if you're not living in the property, then you can't mortgage the property. I go, why not? I have the money to do it. And she's like, you can't. Not legal. And I said, okay, so that's what we're dealing with here, you guys. It's And make no mistake, these rules are not made for the rich. You know, they tell us, oh, if we let people do that, then the rich would just be buying up property everywhere. Well, make the rule for the rich then. Don't make it for the little people. Don't, don't make it for, the, you know... A single guy who's trying to have something, you know, who's trying to also get a tax write off from being overtaxed. And that's when I just decided, you know what? If I lose that job, I'm not going back into this matrix. I'm done. The more you make, the more they take. And then they also betray you because. This job that you think you're going to have for 30 years to pay off this 30-year mortgage, you're not going to have. That's the lie. Oh, come here. You could pay monthly. But then when they fire you from your job or they lay you off and you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off to try to get a new job to finish paying this mortgage, you can't find it. Or you have to move somewhere to get the job. And now you have to sell the house, which you're upside down on. And this is how they lock everyone in the matrix. This is how they do it. So that's when I said, this whole system is broken. The rules are made to keep the little people down. And the rich people get richer because there's loopholes and there's ways around these rules, right? And then people like us who just want a little slice of this earth, which is supposed to be ours anyways, we shouldn't have to pay for it. We have the rules that prevent us from doing this, okay? And the whole thing is designed to make you work harder and work harder and get more and more and more money so that you can break through some of these doors. But then as you're breaking through the doors, the more money you make is creating more problems for you is what's happening, okay? It's pretty amazing because I make a tenth of what I used to make. But yet, I feel like I have more disposable income than I did before because my mortgage used to be $2,500 a month instead of $750 for rent. And because I had to have a car and the kids had to be in private school and there had to be family vacations and all these things. And by the time it was all said and done, there was no disposable income. And it was expected that we had to eat out three times a week or two times a week at $100 a sitting. 
you see how the more you make, the more you think you have to spend. So that is what is going on. And hopefully none of you are caught in this trap. And if you ever are looking at the person standing next to you and you ever start feeling bad about yourself because you don't own a house or because you don't have that car, let that thought leave you right away and rebuke it because you are rich inside of your heart and you don't need all of those problems. I'm going to get off of here, you guys. Much love to you. And we will talk soon. Take care and be safe.